Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Stories Around the World with Doc Lou, right here on the Play Call Experience Network. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff, do all your due diligence. And I would like to thank you for tuning in to the first episode. Now, uh, story time with Doc Lou. Of course, it's me, Doc Lou. Uh, most of these stories I'll be telling you will be compiled from my military um, time, my military service. So it will be between the years of uh, 1988 and 1995. So those were my active years in the military. And in between those years, I've had the opportunity to travel the world. So I've been all around the bubble and back. And uh, I've had some crazy adventures and escapades and, you know, some very memorable stories that, you know, that I would tell people, you know, just for, you know, shits and giggles. So uh, my colleagues told me that I should, you know, tell these stories you know, on the platform, so here we go. So, Play Call Experience Network presents to you stories around the world for Dr. Now, a little bit about myself, you know, I'm a military brat, born and raised. My father was a drill sergeant. I was born in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. My father was drilled there for the first, maybe, five, six, maybe seven years of my life. I was there, we stayed on base, you know, I was a little kid, you know, I just went with the flow. Well, it was time for me to uh, do my thing. When I joined the military, it just so happens that I did my basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, you know, which was bit sweet. Cause I got to go back home because we were staying here in Port City at the time, you know, when I signed up. I was 17 when I signed up for the military. My dad signed the waiver. So what I was able to do was when I uh, my junior year in high school, after my junior year, I went to basic training in the summer in the summertime during the summer break. That's when I went to basic. So, you know, skipping a lot of stuff. But you know, this is story time. This is not autobiography time. But anyway, you know, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, this show is not for your children. <laughs> because of the fact that, you know, we have beverages on this show. I feel like when I hit when I share these stories that it is time for you to wine and unwind. But um, we're not having a wine today, you know, since, you know, Father's Day just passed, you know, that's, I'm camel down, so, you know, what up there, money? But I'm camel down. Most of the time I will be wearing some form of camel for these episodes because it's military story, so. You know, my ass is too big to fit in my military uniform. Look, that was 25, 30 years ago. You know, brother put on some weight. So, we're just gonna leave that where it's at. And I'm gonna adorn some type of camo, right? Okay, good, got that out quick. But uh, no, this is not for your kids because there's going to be language there's going to be drinking. And uh, according to the stories I tell, there's gonna be some other stuff. So, you know, so. Tell them to go play PlayStation, Fortnite, whatever, Roblox, whatever it is that they do. And you get your wine out, whatever you drink, juice, whatever, pour it up. And I'm gonna tell you some 
ridiculous stories that my colleagues think are funny, but we'll see. Well, drink for this episode. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We're going dark today. Uh, we have a mixture stuff. You know, they're not sponsoring, so you know, you know the story. They're not sponsoring. We can't say what it is. I'll say there's a mixture of stuff, but what I can't say. Being that it's a belated Father's Day type of event, there's a little bit of my grandfather's recipe. My grandfather is an elixir artist. <laughs> he is an elixir artist in the woods in an undisclosed area in Alabama. And this is my grandfather's recipe that has been sit down through, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine generations. And for this episode, since I'm talking about my career and my father's play in it, felt like, and this is my grandfather, you know, on my, fa- on my mother's side, you know. So this is his elixir, his recipe, you know, made by his grandson, or one of his sons, one of his sons. But it's his grandfather's recipe, and I salute everyone for taking the time out to hear me blabber, and let's take a sip on that. Congratulations. All right, now, yeah, so yeah, I was in the military, basic training for Jack South Carolina. Now, when I was a young buck, little Lou, father was a drill sergeant you know when they had field exercises and this is for all the military people we had field exercises sometimes depending on what they did you know i got to ride along and go out in the field you know with them and watch them do the thing you know i don't think i was supposed to do that but apparently back then he had a lot of pull no one said that you know and i got to hang out with the guys you know they just mess with me you know i'm a young buck you know it is what it was. It, it was what it was, and, and I had fun, you know. So uh, fast forward to my turn. All right, so past Memphis Station, I went going to base training, flying back to my hometown, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Now I'm, I was kind of excited, you know. Most people when they go to base training, you know, it's a absolute change of everything that you know they break you down from who you were and they build you up to soldier you know if you will give you character if you will but we, you know we're not gonna go there but anyway so you know a lot of people were nervous i was pretty much excited because i had a, a leg up i was raised by a drill sergeant so everything that privates did i did or we did i would say you know, in our rooms, yeah, five, six, five, six years old. Two finger rule. We had a two finger rule in our closet. When we hung our clothes, there had to be these two fingers spaced between each hanger. If it's off, throw all your shit out of the closet and you had to redo it. Kicked all your shoes, your shoes had to be a certain way, or, you know what I'm saying, a certain order. It's not that way, fuck your whole closet off. Didn't matter. Sister got it too. You know, we all got, but you know, that's just a, a sample of, you know, not knowing when to turn the drill sergeant switch off. You know, drill sergeant at work, you know, drill sergeant at home. You know, your kids are your prize. You know, if I raise them like I raised the mugs, they'll be straight. But anyway, so I was, you know, a leg up. So I know what to ex- expect because I lived that way. Trained me to base trainer before I was the base trainer. We had a sand pit in our backyard and everything, all that. But anyway. So when I got there, you know, we was all, they had us all on the bus, you know, just going to get it processed to go to whatever company we were going to. So they lined us all up to put us in whatever company we were in. And uh, at first, no one knew. They just knew I looked familiar. It's like, you know what, Private? You look like somebody we know. You, know, you, you look familiar. I can't put my finger on but they never said nothing. So once we got, you know, divvied up, 
and I ended up being in, you know, the Alpha Company of the whatever infantry unit. This is base training, this is a long time ago. So, you know, I'm going to skip over a lot of details for the sake of boredom. <laughs> Let's sip on it. By the way, uh, this episode is brought to you by the Play Call Experience Network and WTF Now Productions. You can look them up on Facebook. Uh, WTF Now Podcast, it's myself, King Scrap, and uh, Psycho Rico. You can go to the WTF Now Productions YouTube channel and you can check us out over there. And you know, that's kind of this is kind of a spit off from that, you know, story times because normally I would tell them on that podcast. And uh, they just said, man, you need to just do that. You know, just make just make a story. And I said, okay, well, fuck it. And I'm doing that. Sit to that. Okay, now fuck it. All right, look, I got, you know, I'm not going to keep y'all all night, man. I'm not going to make this long because, you know, people got to go to sleep and shit. And, you know, I wait till fucking old dark 30 to do it. But let's keep it going. All right. So, Alpha Company. I'm there, you know, and we're in line, you know, they got us information and they all looking. So they're going down the line, they checking us out. Then he comes to me and I'm squared away. You know, I grew up this way, so but it was an anomaly to them because they under the assumption that everybody is from the hood or from the fucking sticks or whatever, you know, or your pretty boy Malibu out of some, you know anything but prepared for what they about to put on your ass. So I was squared away, had my shit straight. I said, oh, I said, you in the ROTC? I was like, no drill sergeant. No. You can't do your day right, you're gonna, you're gonna be a good one. So it's like right off the bat, boom. It's made the fucking squad leader. You know, I was the squad leader of the line of motherfuckers that was in my line. I was at the end, so I'm responsible for them. All right, cool. So, after that, next day, it was a drill sergeant from another company. He was walking by and he looked and he saw my name and he looked at me and said, man, I know you look familiar. Your last name Williams, ain't it? He said, you kidding? Drill sergeant Williams, they used to, they used to be a drill sergeant here. No, I, I, I didn't say anything. Cause I didn't want everybody to know, you know what I'm saying, for the favoritism. You know, I didn't, I didn't want that, so I said, no drill sergeant. See, but you look familiar, though. You look familiar. You know, let me, let me check you out there. Uh, what's your name, Parker Williams? Come on, come on with me. Come on over here with me. So I fall out, you know, and I go over here with the drill sergeant, so it's one guy. So he calls the other two drill sergeants over to him, so. You know, I'm standing here and I got three drill sergeants in my face. I'm a book pride, you know, straight off the bus. No rank, nothing. Just my name, right? But I'm squally. He was like, man, it's just pride to look familiar to you, man. His last name Williams. Man, you think this drill sergeant bull, son? And uh, I didn't know who the fuck drill sergeant bull was. I didn't know him as drill sergeant bull. He was pops, dad. You know, I didn't know, I never heard of who the fuck Drill Sergeant Bull was. You know what I'm saying? He was Drill Sergeant Williams. When, when I went to the field, I never heard Bull. So that must have been what the fuck they called him, you know, amongst themselves. You know, everybody has a nickname for the Drill Sergeant. The ones that's been in the military know we all made nicknames for all the motherfuckers, you know. But anyway, so he was like, yeah, he do look like Drill Sergeant Bull's last name Williams, man. We're going to have to... Yeah, we're gonna have to check that out. So, you know, we go on go on back to your fucking company or whatever there, uh private wings. So yeah, you know, so everything was all cool. The next day, private wings. Come on over here to the front. This started day one, y'all. They was fucking with me from day one. But the third time I went over there and it was like, okay, all right, private wings. Did a little research and come to find out you are Drill Sergeant Bull's son, and you lucky you in Alpha Company because if you was a Bravo Company, I smoke your motherfucking ass. Understand me? That motherfucker gave us hell. That's why we call him Drill Sergeant Bull because he was a motherfucking bull. You know all this? They give me all this. I ain't know. You know what I'm saying? Sins of the father. 
But, but you know, what are the odds? I didn't plan on going to Fort Jackson to basic training. Just so happened I wanted to be a mechanic. That's where they train them at. A wheel mechanic. You know, I learned how to work on wheels and shit. But that's that's next episode. But, you know, anyway, all right. Basic training. So, yeah, so now they understand that I'm Drill Sergeant Bull's son. So now there's like every day in formation when they line all of us up, I have to go to the front and hear this shit from all these, you know, from all the drill sergeants and for privates that, you know, that were victims of my dad's training. Now everybody wants a piece of the pie. Everybody wants to train, you know, Private Williams because that's Drill Sergeant Bull's son. So if I train him, Drill Sergeant Bull's gonna come to his graduation and I get the accolades, this, that, and the third, you know, that's, you know, maybe I can move up the rank. Whatever the story was behind it, to get some revenge, whatever the story was behind it, everybody wanted Private Williams in the company so they could give me the business. But just so happens I'm with the Alpha company. Which I thought was a good thing because I ain't want these guys fucking with Thought that. Okay. So, here we go, y'all. Basic training. We get up, old dark 30 in the morning to do PT, physical training. This is when we do exercises, you know, to condition our body and, you know what I'm saying, to stimulate our minds, to push ourselves further than we think we're capable of doing. Okay. So when we line up for PT, of course, Private Williams. Bring your ass on up to the front, buddy. We got some for you. So here it goes. So I run up there. So now I have to lead the PT, you know. Because I know Drill Sergeant Bull got you ready. You see this uniform when they came in? You know, this, you know they, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw them all high and tight. You know what I'm saying? Dressed white and covered down. You know, I know Drill Sergeant Bull got them right. You took it, you was half covered. You took All right, well, you know, it's nothing. Real talk, y'all, there was nothing that these guys could do or say that could even get to the level of the conditioning and training that I've had as a kid living with it. There's nothing they could do, you know. I've been trained by Palpatine himself. There's nothing that these Count Dooku's can do that affect me, <laughs> you know, if you're a Star Wars person, you know what I'm saying? Take a drink on that. Yeah. And by the way, if you have some sippage and you would like to donate some sippage or let me know what sippage that you have, I will definitely drink it on the program and I will definitely plug your drink. And if it's good, I will definitely let you know it's good. Well, it sucks. But I won't let you know it sucks on the platform. I'll just shoot your email. <laughs> you know, I'll get you a deal. So we're gonna take a station identification sip break for them uh for the motherfuckers. Yeah. Shout out to my grandfather, Rest Power. That is a wonderful elixir. Shout out to my uncle too, because you know it was his hands, you know, but it was uh Papa's recipe, his hands, but it's it's um it's lovely, it's delicious, and it goes good with everything else that's mixed in there that I can't say. But anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program. Now, this Doc Blue based training Fort Jackson, the drill sergeants know now that I am the offspring of Drill Sergeant Bull. So now news spread all across, you know, our our battalion or whatever. So <laughs> Excuse me, a little bird back, you know, a little reflux there. Excuse me, I'm working on that. It's only when I do the sippage, and that's not all the time. But let's get out, get off track. Let's get back on the story. It's not an AA me. It's supposed to be a good time. We're supposed to drink. Okay, all right, we got that out the way. Now, so here we go, guys. So I led PT, you know, had to lead the exercise when we do our runs, had to do that. So as I'm leading them, you better not get the cadence on Private Williams or it's going to be Death Valley for you. Now Death Valley was the sand pit that we had in the back of our bags when we fuck up. 
you know, they take you out there and make you do push-ups, sit up, all kind of stupid ass exercises. Wear your ass out to the point where you throw up, then once you throw up, then that's lesson learned. Train. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway. Sand pit 20 times, by the way. I hold a record what I used to. I don't know what it is now, but back then I held the record during my time in basic training as most times in the sand pit. No, not most of them. I would say six out of the 20 were earned. <laughs> the rest of them, it was just GP. Oh, look at, look at Private Williams. k ass it pit. That's that shit. You know, all, you know, sins of the father trying to get, you know, taking it out on me, you know, passing down the book or whatever if you will. You know, but I was prepared for it. You know, did it suck? Fuck yeah, I want to fight. <laughs> but, you know, it's, you know, I had to go through it because not only was it to show them that my dad ain't raised no punk. Pardon if you know, don't get offended by that. Mind you, this is an 80s mindset. So we're just gonna have to move all of the all of that, we're going to sit there to the side from this time frame, it's a different time. But anyway, we got that out there. All right. So I was prepared, and then there's no way that I was going to tarnish my father's legacy that he left there. You know what I'm saying? So I did all that. You know, got back, they all let everybody go take showers. So I had to stand there and, yeah, yeah, Pratt Williams. You know, you, ooh, ooh, you lucky in that cup. Man, smoking good for me, man. I ain't got my hands on it. You know, like I'm some type of piece of meat. And, you know, me being the Williams that I am, you know, but back a little bit. Can't smoke a rock drill, Sergeant. Ooh, 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 he got, ooh, he got comebacks. Ooh, let me have him. That part. But that was the going, that was the same. So whenever somebody in my squad fucked up and they had to do push-ups, you know, just to show them up, I would get down whatever push-ups they had to do, I'd get down there with them and do the push-ups with them, you know, and the ones that he couldn't do, I would do. You know, because it was, it, you know, just to let them know, yeah, this is Drill Sergeant Bull's son, you know, yeah, and, and I mean y'all ass just like y'all in mind. Let's see, let's go. Let's see who gonna push back and forth. Let's see where this turn of war go. So, was, so this is base training, you know, back and forth. All right, so, child time. Now, child time, all of the companies in the battalion and other battalions, we go to, you know, to eat. It's called a mess hall. But this is where we all go, where, you know, we have to show our ID once we go in Hey, look at our ID, look at us. It's us, all right, we go we get our plate, sit down, eat, eat, drink, or shit. We don't have that much time, by the way. You know, time is, a, you know, time is, is very crucial. If you ever now, now, if you ever date someone in the military and they eat fast as fuck, that's, this is the reason why. Because we only had a, a short amount of time to eat before we had to go do some shit. So we got in there, you handled your business. Head down, let's go. Okay, so we go in, and there's a drill sergeant that checks everybody out. And of course, word got around, so here we go. So, you know, everybody go through the line. The line is long as fuck. So I get to the line, it's my turn, so I hand him my ID. Oh, we got Private Williams up here, huh? What's up, Private Williams? I heard you just on Bull Song, Private Williams. I got you, homie. I got you. Where you from, Private Williams? Where you from? So I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana. Shreveport? You're from Shreveport? Well, I'm from Shreveport, too. Private Williams? What part of Shreveport you from? I grew up in Motown. Motown? Yeah, Motown, Forest Oak. Oh, oh, oh. Well, guess what, there, Private Williams? I'm from the Cooper Road. So what you gonna do, Private Williams? I tell you what you can do. You go on to the back of the line, Shreveport. So from then to the end of basic training, I was known as Private Shreveport. Whenever they called me or needed me for anything, they'd be Private Shreveport. 
and then I gotta run my dumb ass up to see what kind of dumb shit they had planned for. So this was every day, y'all. Mind you, there are five companies of about 40 to 50 dudes waiting to eat. When I get to the line, I don't have to go not to the back of my company's line. I had to go to the back of my battalion. So that means that I'm the last person to get my plate, right? When he finally, finally, all right then, Pratt Street Port, you go ahead on and get your But you know what? They got something special for you. Yes, they do, Pratt Street Port. Go on, go on, go on with your more time ass. Yeah, base training, y'all. This is my base training because I just so happen to be the son of the Raj Drill Sergeant that stepped foot on that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so here we go, y'all. So I finally get my plate. And I'm looking to sit with my company. But everybody looking at me like, what in the fuck did this dude do for them to be fucking with him like that? Who is this dude? You know, I don't know who want to go to Shreveport. <laughs> They was talking that shit all the way in South Carolina, fam. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. That's how we are. But you know, they were terrified of who the fuck I was for the simple fact that all of the drill sergeants fuck with me on a daily basis. Now, I got my plate. I'm looking for Alpha Cup. Oh, no, Brad Shreveport. No. You don't eat with them. You come eat with us. You special. So you come, you you got a special place in the mess hall. So now I got to take my plate and I go behind this curtain. Now, the drill sergeants eat behind a curtain. They're curtained off for the pride. Because, you know, they be back there talking that shit. Yeah, this private fuck up. You know what I'm saying? This is good private, you know, but he hard-headed. You know, this motherfucker ain't going to make it. That's when they, you know, they they do all their gossiping and flea flicking. You know what I'm saying? What up, KG? And, uh... So I had to go back here, and there's 10 drill sergeants on this side of this long ass fucking table. They put like five, six tables together. 10 on this side, 10 on that side. And they had this big chair in the front of the table. This is where the master sergeant sits, right? The one that's over all this shit. This is where he's sitting. That's your seat. Shreveport, Brian Shreveport, that's your spot. So you sit right there every day, eat your food right there. So I'm doing what you're telling me to do. So I sit in, sit in a chair. So now I'm in the front. I knew something had to be wrong, you know. So I'm sitting at the front, 10 on this side, 10 on that side, and everybody talking shit at the same time about this John Dressarn Bull son. And I had to hear all of the torture, you know what I'm saying, and the horror that they had to go through as privates. The drill sergeant bull, this, that, and the third, right? And it was like, yeah, you lucky you got an app company. Because if you was in my company, you wouldn't even be able to walk. You know, just everybody just give me cash shit. You know what I'm saying? So this was every day, every day. So the master sergeant comes in and he's just standing there with his plate in his hand. Like what in the entire fuck is this private doing sitting in my damn chair? You know what I'm saying? Especially back here with all of us. So, you know. Oh, allow me to introduce him. Sorry, uh, Master Sergeant, that is uh Drill Sergeant Bull's son, Pride Shreveport. So I would say Williams on the shirt. We understand that, Matt Sarge, but he's Private Shreveport. So, like, all right, well, why is Private Shreveport in my fucking chair? Because he's special. That's just on bull, son. He's special. He's a special private. He can't be amongst all them others. He's, he's special. So, this motherfucker put his tray down beside me, gets this little ass chair. Now, mind you, this is his chair I'm sitting in, that he sits in every day. He got this little ass fold out chair and sat beside me. He said, okay, if you're gonna sit in that chair, then you're gonna have to beat everybody in here, including me eating. 
if you don't, if you have food on your plate after we get through eating, you would do KP every day. So I had to do that every day. So every day, I had to go back to the end of the line. Every day. The end of my battalion line, I had to go back to the end of that shit. And then when everybody else goes through, they let me in. And when I get my plane, I had to sit in the master sergeant's chair. It's big, you know what I'm saying? Some big motherfucking Julius Caesar, King of Rome, big throne, Mufasa shit. I'm sitting there, I'm a private. I don't have shit on, no motherfucking rank, nothing. I gotta sit there and eat and beat these motherfuckers eating every day. I did 35 days KP <laughs> 35 days KP in nine uh, weeks I was there. I did 35 days KP because I could not beat these motherfuckers. You know, I did on, on some occasions, I got better at it, you know, but most of the time I got beat and that was the outcome of it. I did this every day. Every day in basic training, there was always something. So, you know, fast, you know, and uh, that's just one of the stories. You know, there are like three or four stories that in basic training alone, dealing with these guys. So, you know, this is just episode one of dinner with the drills. That's what we'll call this. You know, stories from around the world with Doc Lou, dinner with the drills. You know, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. You know, my experience as a private that is the offspring of the badge drill sergeant that supposedly walked the base. I can't confirm nor deny that. So I'm just gonna have to go with what was told to me. And that was my torture. That that's my story. That, well, that's just part one of basic training. I found out that I was Drill Sergeant Bull's son and the treacher and the torture begins. Well, I won't say torture, but the fucker, fuckery begins. So just imagine every day you try to go eat. You had to go eat with your bosses, listen to them talk shit about you. And then you had to beat them eating or you lose your job every day. Yeah, and then that's just eating, you know. Anything else I had to do, I had to be first. Nothing could be wrong with my uniform. My boots always had to be shined. My shoestrings and my PT shoes had to be white. I don't understand what the fuck that was all about, but mine had to be white. Had to wear white shoes and keep them clean. I can't, understand, I, I can't even tell you how much money I spent on shoes because I had to have all white shoes because I was private Shreveport, I was special. But you know, and that, that was the time, man. So yeah, that was it, man. Uh, I tell you, <laughs> sins of the father, you know. And uh, and this is episode one, you know. I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in. Like I said, I don't want to keep these long, you know, because I be here all night telling y'all the whole basic training story. You know, I'm just gonna break them up into pieces. So part one is the arrival, dinner, breakfast, lunch, with the drills. Every day, sitting, you know, taking this shit in. But I, you know, but I kept it real because I was like, you know what? I'm not finna let these fucks break me because, you know, I know who you motherfuckers. I know what you been through, you know? But, you know, I had to, you know, muscle on through that. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's it, y'all. That's uh, episode one, Story Time with Doc Lou. I would like to thank y'all. Take a time out and, you know, having this joyous occasion with me. Um, I'm going to be drinking most of this off camera, you know. You know. You know how it is, you know, I like to sip and reminisce on my own, listen to a little music, you know, since I'm in that energy now, you know, I'm gonna bask in a little bit. But um, and like I said, if you had a breakfast, reach out to me. Uh, I will be reaching out to some of my friends. We're gonna be sharing some stories, you know, from around the world. We're gonna have some guests on, you know, to make this more entertaining for you. 
And uh, if you want to reach out to uh, Doc Lou, just hit me up at the play call at gmail.com, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the play call experience network. Or you can go to the website, play call experience network sites.com. I have a link to all of my social media platforms. You can get in contact with me. I would love to come out and I would love to get in contact with you and let you have a show sharing story time. This is not all about me. You know it says with, it says with Doc Lee. Not about Doc Lee. Ha Yeah. Got your ass. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Um, this is part one, part two will be coming very soon. You know, I'm not going to be years apart. I'm going to try to keep these things rolling and, you know, and share some of my escapades in the military. So there you go, guys. Dinner with the drills. I, I guess I got to have some type of moral at the end of these shits. So let's, let's do that. So the moral of the story is, you know, no matter what path your parents may lead for you, Make sure that you stand tall. You stand true. Fuck the motherfuckers. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. I do all this shit so it ain't no ending credits, but I'll just roll my name about four or five times anyway while I sit. If you'd like to advertise on the show, just hit me up at the Play Call Experience Network on all social media platforms and, uh, we can make that happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is supposed to be for the end for the for the credit roll, you know. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, I hope that this is therapy for some. I want y'all to laugh at some of my pain, you know, because now it's all it's funny now. It's funny to me now, so I can share these stories with y'all, and it's therapy for me, and it helps me be a better person. So thank y'all you know and to all of my fellow soldiers service men service women all forces you know if you're dealing with that ptsd hit me up on my social media platform and uh play call experience at gmail.com or you can hit me up on any of my social media platforms you know you can contact me any way that you can and I will contact you and I will speak to you and I will do all that I can to help you because we all need help and I'm still going through it too. So thank you. Good day, good night, or whenever the fuck you're watching it. Sip, have fun, enjoy your life. And like we say here at the Play Call Experience Network, mate, we're gonna help you make the right play call in your life so you can be the champion of your life. Peace out. Thank you.